Um, I'm Scott Jacobs, and I am a, I guess you would call it a fine artist, uh, because my, my paintings are very, very detailed and take an incredible amount of time to do them. I got introduced uh, to the world of art at an early age, um, right out of junior high school, basically. I, I started doing illustrations for the school newspaper when I was uh, about 14 years old. And then shortly after that, a couple years later, I, I got a job in an art gallery at, uh, I guess I was in 11th grade and I've been in it ever since. It's been my entire life's work has been art. I bought Scott a painting kind of set to get started painting. Sometime, we, we disagree about the exact year. Uh, it might have been 89, I thought it was when Olivia was born, which was 90. Uh, but I bought him a paint set in that I got canvas and an easel and paints and brushes and the whole bit because he needed a hobby. I got involved with Harley back in the early 90s, 1993 actually is the year I became the first artist licensed by Harley. But I had been painting a lot of celebrities portraits and I was jumping all over the board. I was doing uh, cubism pieces, abstract, all kinds of uh, paintings. And then I started doing all these portraits. But the problem was that picture Malcolm Forbes, you know, one of the real famous billionaires from the past. I did a portrait of him standing in front of one of his helicopters, and I knew that that wouldn't really have a commercial marketing, you know, image. It wouldn't be something that you would hang on your wall. So I needed to paint something that would uh, touch more people. First painting that Scott ever sold. Wow. You know, I'm not exactly sure. My brain is going through his book and trying to look at the early works, but it would have been probably either a portrait that he painted for somebody or just a picture of a woman. And, you know, he just, he did a lot of family portraits. He painted his sister and he did my sister-in-law and, you know, some other people just to kind of get the, the practice and the, the experience. So I was on the phone with Ron Koppel, who's been working for us now for over 20 years. And he said, what about Harleys? You know, I was just at this big event riding through the canyon and I saw all these Harleys and you're into bikes and maybe you try painting a Harley. And I'm thinking, I've done a lot of cars before, but it'd be like painting a car, but taking off the fenders and taking the hood off and now you're painting the engine and all the parts and everything. So it's totally different than painting a car. So I, I did two of them and we brought them to the New York Art Expo and the LA Art Expo and the licensing department for Harley-Davidson took notice and basically told me I couldn't do what I was doing. They're like, these are trademark things, you know, these logos and everything, you can't do this, you know. They gave me a cease and desist order and I'm like, wait a minute, I, you know, how do you go about having limited edition prints of these paintings I've been doing? They're like, well, you have to be licensed. I'm like, okay, I want to be licensed. And they said, we don't license artwork. Well, like, maybe you should license artwork because there is no art available out there for your, you know, people that ride motorcycles. And so they uh, saw my work uh, at another show and they finally decided that it might be a good thing. So in 93, I became the first artist licensed by Harley Davidson. Yeah, I'm under painting right now. I'm just, um, I start with a solid color and then I'll add all the different gradation or gradations of color over it. This is uh, just to build up color. So I get rid of the white of the canvas. It's the most, uh, boring part of the entire painting is doing all the underpainting because even though you you got three weeks into this painting it doesn't really look like much of anything yet there's no depth to it except maybe the drop shadows below the bike and the, you know the depth that we have in the background the consistency of the paint is so important right now this paint's not perfect uh, consistency so it's actually breaking apart on me it's not covering perfectly there's all these little white specks in here that are coming up because the paint is opening up. It's, I, I think I might have too much water in it. I use these little tiny. These are, uh, this particular one's a zero brush and you can see where the, uh, when the paint's on it, it's about the size of a sharp pencil. And then I use as small as a, a 10 zero, which would be about half, half as many bristles as this. And this is already tiny. And I do the majority of the work with these little tiny brushes because I've just gotten so used to them over the years. I've been using these for almost 30 years now. And this particular brand, uh, Lowell Cornell, is, is awesome. It's a uh, synthetic brush, but 
I might only use two or three brushes in a large painting like this, and where I've used sable brushes in the past, and those things broke up, you know, you'd have hair in all different parts of the painting, and which drives you crazy. You don't want to have to clean up all these pieces of brush in your painting before you varnish it. But you can see I'm just blocking in this little area here. And even if I do all the springs right now, it'll probably take about 20, 25 minutes just to put one coat down. And then a lot of the colors that you use in these paintings, they're, they're transparent. It's going to take sometimes five, seven, eight different coats of the same color, layer upon layer, just to cover the white of the canvas to get it solid. So anytime we can use opaque colors, we do, because it you know, might only take two or three coats. This will take at least two, if not three. I think that my dad's love for old bikes has always been there, but I feel like the Cannonball Run made him become obsessed with it. I think he just enjoys like looking at them. I know they are way more challenging for him to paint because it's not you know the perfect chrome, the perfect paint job. They have chips and there's crooked um, springs and uh, just rusty areas that challenge him more in the painting aspect and I feel like him painting them over the last couple years has intrigued him to maybe actually physically ride them and be a part of them. <laughs> oh yeah, the whole writing a note thing. Yeah, they're <laughs> being <laughs> ridiculous right now outside. Oh um, my gosh. So anyway. <laughs> uh, look at him, look at him, look at him. He just, did you see him hook mom's yes, head with the pool thing? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, other than, yeah, I, I, I get to see him pressure her into shit. <laughs>